Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Billiard Network, the home of Global Pool on YouTube. My name is Imran Majid, a.k.a. the Maharaja, and I'm going to be hosting today's match. And we have a nice, fast and exciting affair with Tony Drago, ultimately the fastest player in the world against Dimitri Jungo. Here we are in rack number one. This was played way back in 2009 at the European Championships in St. Johan, Austria. This is a race to eight, alternate break, and the game is eight ball. As you can see, we are already in rack number one. Dimitri Jungo actually won the lag and is at the table right now. So, Dimitri's uh, on solids, and he's got a nice open table, just four balls left in this first rack, and uh, should complete this rack without any troubles, really. It's nice to comp commentate on a bit of 8-ball, which is uh, a refreshing change from the usual 9-ball. Nice position on the 1-ball there. Threaded the gap between the eight and uh, the striped ball. Good positional shot there. Dimitri Jungo from Switzerland. Right now at the age of 38, Tony Drago from Malta age 55 right now but in this match obviously they were younger this was played in 2009 some 11 years ago so Tony was 44 years old at the time of this match Oh, Jungo just trying to work out his position for the eight. Doesn't seem too difficult. Maybe he can draw into the stripe or find a gap. That's nicely done. Dimitri Jungo takes down rack number one. It's an alternate break format, and here we have. Tony Drago breaking in rack number two. Can't wait to see Tony in action in this match. He's uh, probably the fastest player in the world, or oh, he's up there. I can name another couple of fast players, Luke Salvis maybe, and uh, more current day and age, Joshua Filler is a fast player. Okay, so Dimitri's first at the table and He's on stripes. I think it's looking like that we have to make do with this camera angle that we have. So he's got some work to do. He's got a stripe near the corner pocket. 
and I think he should shoot the other stripe near the long rail down to the corner pocket by the two after this shot that will get rid of one problem Tony Drago, a very good friend of mine we used to travel together to uh, all the pool tournaments when he used to live in London but now he resides uh, back in his home country in Malta and uh, stays with his mum so Tony like a good little boy is looking after mummy And that's a missed ball. Didn't expect that from Dimitri. And a pretty open table for Tony. I don't see many problems in this run out. He's on spots and they're all in favourable positions. That went a bit funny. They say in eight ball you shouldn't run into other balls unless you have to develop them because you never really know what's going to happen. See now that pink four goes in the top pocket and he's played position for it now so it should once making this ball open up the rack Now he did glance that stripe next to the 8. And I'm not sure if the 8 ball has a pocket now. Maybe it just creeps past that stripe into the corner. Anyway, bottom right hand spin here. Get position on the 6. Probably want it to be a bit straighter. He's got an angle going into the stripe. So he's got to be careful here. That's nicely done. Went twice across the table. And obviously the eight ball does pass the stripe into the corner. Nicely done. Tony Drago takes down rack number two. Rack number three. Dimitri Jungo to break. Nice hard break there. Good power on the cue ball. Looks like a dry one to me. And he stands there in disgust. Tony jumps out of his chair. It's taking a few seconds to assess the situation. In eight ball, you have to do a little bit of planning when you first come to the table. Whereas uh, other games like 9-ball and 10-ball, the planning is uh, a bit more obvious, I would say, when you first approach a table. So he's electing to take spots, solids. He can go into the 8 and 6 here now to open the cluster, but uh, didn't do that. I'm surprised he didn't open the 8-6 there because he had the perfect angle because the 6 right now doesn't have a pocket, I believe. So he's got a plan. We shall soon find out what he had in mind. This is a little bit thin on the four ball, playing with some bottom right hand spin. <laughs> and caught the stripe. Yeah, his position wasn't too good there on the four ball. Hence the miss. Now Dimitri's probably surprised to come back to the table.
Yeah, he's just looking at how he can uh, sort out that cluster with the four and nine ball. Dimitri, regarded as uh, one of the best, if not the best player in Switzerland. <coughs> this format is actually quite cutthroat. Eight ball on fairly big pockets at a top level can be quite easy. I think eight ball is, uh, especially in America, is regarded as more of an amateur game. They have big leagues out there. In America, the APA and the BCA all play eight ball, mostly, I believe. So, obviously, Tony's four ball is spoiling Dimitri's party, and he needs to do something about that now. He can play a safety shot, where he would hit his strike ball first and pot Tony's four ball. And in doing that, he should get a good safety out of it as well. He can just skim off the edge of this nine, pop the four ball. Okay, he used the ten to glance off. Uh, but that's just as effective. It's got Tony in a spot of bother. Tony takes no time at all to kick at the ball. I believe it's the three ball. Successfully made contact. So Dimitri electing to take the stripe ball first and come down table, I believe. Oh, wow, that was very close to the side pocket. It actually hit the far jaw and uh, he was a lucky boy there. He could play a safety now, just to get better position on his stripes, because uh, his cue ball was lying near the corner pocket, near the rail there. Uh, sorry, side pocket. So that's a sensible shot. Keeping Drago in his handcuffs. One rail kick again for Tony. And that's quite far away. So that's a foul. Ball in hand for Dimitri. There's lots of different ways we can go out, um, go about uh, eight ball run out. 
there's always one ideal or best way to run out, which has the less margin for error. And you see the top players go about their runouts in the most efficient manner. And there's definitely more thinking required in 8-ball as opposed to 9-ball or 10-ball or any rotation game. We did have a, a tour called the World Pool Series hosted by Darren Appleton and we played 8-ball there, but the rules were made a little bit harder or much harder, would I say they were played on tight pockets and you had to take what you make on the break you didn't have the option to choose solid or stripes you had to take what you make there was no jump shots allowed or maybe one jump shot per rack and um, you had to break from the box couldn't break from the corner so it made uh, the game much more difficult but that was preferred by the top pros you know so it looks like it's gonna draw back all the way down this end of the table for his last stripe and that should afford easy access to the 8 ball doesn't want to be straight here when he draws down so wants to maintain an angle so got to control your draw found the gap nicely and lo and behold he's landed pretty straight I'm not sure from my monitor if it goes in the side pocket but definitely goes in the corner pocket need a nice controlled draw stroke here that's very nice it looks like he's going for the corner played it into the rail slightly but too much into the rail and missed the ball Unexpected miss there. And Tony's got easy two balls to steal this rack. And he does. 2-1 to Drago. Rack number four, Tony to, to break, made a ball inside, it was a stripe, and that's a pretty good break, but look at that, he's so unlucky there, uh, not to have a shot at all, the two ball came and sport the party, and yes, as you can see by Tony's expression, he's laughing and giggling, but I'm sure he's not too happy, he's Going for the two in the side, it's going to be, okay, and he missed it. Yeah, very unlucky there from Tony. Hit a good break and made a ball, but no shot on any ball. He did try a shot on two, but it was very difficult. Dimitri just working out his pattern. He's on stripes and there is 
two balls down the left hand side of the table by the four ball which look to be clustered up don't have obvious pockets oh sorry he's actually on solids because Tony failed to make a ball at the beginning that's right yeah so he's taking solids and solids are a much more easier set of balls to go for In 8-ball, you always want to work backwards. You want to know the position of your 8-ball and work backwards from that. And we always have a key shot, which is the last ball before the 8. So he wants to identify which ball is the easiest to get on the 8-ball. And like that he can work out a nice route so here he's not out of the woods yet he's gonna have kind of a tricky position on the three ball yeah it's a thin cup but if he does make it he should get natural shape on the eight ball if he can avoid that stripe to the left so might want to spin this in with uh, some... Okay, he's on the stripe. Oh, sorry, that's the one ball. It's hard to see the color of the ball sometimes. And uh, that's absolutely perfect. The red three passes stripe and he can play the eight in the side. So just a stop shot, I would believe. Stunned over slightly. And an easy 8-ball to level up the match. 2-2 two, two now. Rack number 5. Dimitri Jungo to break. Nice solid break makes one, two balls, two stripes, I believe. Or maybe a solid and a stripe. And this is a nice open table. It's got an easy opener on the two. And then he doesn't really have to do too much work. He's going to have minimal movement of the cue ball in this run out I would have thought because the the balls are in close proximity to each other so doesn't have to move his rock much and that's key when playing eight ball try not to move your cue ball too much it can obviously get you into trouble Now, he does have this one ball to the left side of the table. I believe that's the one where he's standing now. And he could leave that for his last ball and play the eight on the side afterwards. Yeah, that's probably the most prudent play. So, probably wants to play position on the four ball here after the six because that will open up the pocket for the five. Nice little friendly bump there on the five. And you want to play into a position where you have options in eight ball. So let's see what kind of options he gives himself when drawing back this four ball. He will definitely have the three in the side. Okay, he's on the seven ball. Don't think he can make the five in the side. It's a little bit deceiving from my camera angle. But maybe he does. So he's definitely going to leave the one ball till last. And he can see this five. 
rolling forward for the three. There's nothing wrong with that. Ideally, would be would like to be straight on the eight ball, so you could just use a stop shot and nice use of the ten there to give him good shape on the seven. So probably straight top, come down the middle of the table, somewhere in the centre to play a stop shot on the one. Well controlled. Now it's just stop, stop, easy as you like for a 3 2 lead. Drago concedes. And uh, we're in rack number six. The Maltese Falcon to break. Successful break, made a couple of balls, a solid and a stripe, I believe. So does have a choice now. Not sure if he has an easy opener at first glance. Maybe the 10 goes by the 3. Okay, he's got a window for the 6 ball. That's quite handy. We haven't seen Tony firing on all cylinders yet in this match. But I'm sure we will. That was a bit dangerous, the way he played it. So, plays the three next, then the seven, then the eight in the corner. Just a stun. Bottom right on the cue ball here. Probably five o'clock, stun over for the eight. Easy eight ball to tie up the match, 3-3 three, three now. Rack number seven. Dimitri to break. We are playing a race to eight. Alternate break. Solid break, makes a ball in the side. That's usually one of your intended balls that you would like to make when playing eight ball, is the two balls behind the one. Does have a little problem at first glance. There's a stripe and uh, a green six on the right hand side of the table. Does have an angle on the 10 where he could float forward and maybe open up that cluster. But that could go wrong. When you're opening clusters, it's always a good idea to have an insurance ball in case you don't open up your cluster correctly. Okay, he played into the 8. There's nothing wrong with that. Now the 8 does have a pocket. Does still have that problem of the 10 ball, I think it is. I'm not sure if it pots. It's marginal. Probably shoot the, the red 11 on the long rail here. He's probably thinking to himself, how do I attack that 10 ball by the 6? That will be in his mind. Shooting 11. Bottom right hand spin. Kill the speed of the cue ball. Well executed.
Yeah, he's looking at it now. He can actually pot it from there, where his cue ball is now. There is a window between the five and four. Dimitri taking his time and rightly so because this is quite tricky to get on that 10 ball. Like I said, does have a shot on it now if he wanted to. He's tempted to play it. Yes, no. A little bit indecisive. Okay, he's down on the ball. He's committing to this. And why not when he has a shot on it now? That was nicely done. Actually drew into the other balls to open up the rack nicely. Ideally, he'd like to play the pink stripe now. I'm not sure if he can get to it. Okay, so I thought he was going to shoot the nine there. He gets up. Probably will shoot it. Shooting the nine could give him kind of natural position on that pink stripe. Okay. So the nine passes the one. Yeah, then he needs uh, an angle on his penultimate stripe, that's what he's looking at now, to get on the pink stripe. Roll forward slightly, wants to maintain an angle. Now can play this with bottom left hand spin, not too much. Wants to find that gap between the six and seven. Looks like he can play bottom left hand spin, play shape between the six and seven. Yep, somewhere around there where he pointed his cue. That was probably seven o'clock on the cue ball. I'm not sure if he got there. He looks partially snookered to me. He got into that ball a bit too much there. Yeah, he probably used... Uh, bit too much bottom. Maybe you should have played 8 o'clock on the cue ball instead of 7 o'clock. There's little fine margins like that when you're playing Q-tip position. That can either put you in a good position or a bad position. So it's always a, guy, a good idea to concentrate on your Q-tip position when playing any kind of pool game really you want to be sure that that's the place you want to hit the cue ball so he's going for a jump shot here 
And caught the seven first. That's a foul. Has he messed up the eight ball with that stripe? Tony can go into it now with the four ball, with the cue ball. It's not a problem. Yep, yeah, solved the problem. And now I'll waste no time at all. I know Tony's game inside out. He'll clear these in less than like 30 seconds. He's going to draw back slightly. A nice position on the seven to get to the eight. Four, three, Drago. Tony breaks and looks like it's dry to me. Hit him pretty good. Looks like maybe it was a, a bad rack. You see a cluster of balls around the eight ball spot. So a little bit of work here for Dimitri. He's working out which set of balls he should take first. He's electing to take stripes. And if that green stripe goes, he can roll forward and bump the four and it would open up things nicely. Or is he drawing back? Okay, he did bump the four. He's got options here. The only troublesome ball I can see is that brown stripe near the eight ball spot. A little bit hampered here, yeah, but shouldn't be a problem. Lovely place, actually. St. Johan, where they're playing in Austria. Very picturesque, snow-capped mountains. So, not the end of the world if you do go out of the tournament. You can have a little holiday. So, it looks like he's going to attack that brown stripe somehow. Oh, it goes into the side. That was good thinking. It was hard for me to see if it actually went in the side from this view. So he'd love to get on the nine ball here and leave the, the stripe in the middle of the table for his last ball. That's nicely done. 
See here, I see he pots the nine, then he can pot the, f the, the orange stripe in the side and use the five ball as a stopper for the eight ball in the opposite side pocket. It seems like the most logical way to go about things. He may have different plans. Yeah, I'd be surprised if we took the other one. Yeah, this is the best way to go. Nine ball. Use the long rail to get closer to that stripe. Now he's got natural angle off this to bump the five, or maybe even glide past it. Yep, nicely done. Let's see, if you work out your patterns, it does become quite easy. Rack number nine. We are at 4 4. Dimitri to break. Looks like a dry one. Tony doesn't waste any time coming to the table. Gets down to shoot very quickly. Pretty open this table. Has a nice shot on the seven, so get up, get rid of it now. Just needs to mind his work and control his cue ball. See there, Tony takes a couple of small strokes, and fires. Tony said to me once, if he takes his time, he starts looking for problems on the table and adds negativity to his game. That's why he plays at such speed and he's been very successful doing that. Easy eight ball to go up, five, four, Drago. Rack number 10. Tony breaks off, makes two balls in the corner pocket, one of each, a spot and a stripe, or a solid, I should say. Electing to take stripes. It's got a pretty open table. Nine ball could be a bit tricky, but uh, shouldn't be a problem because that 11 ball is quite handy next to it. Found that gap nicely. Yep, just wants to go over and get the correct angle. Okay, he's uh, playing the 11 first, then the 9. Uh, that wasn't bad, actually. It's quite efficient play, actually, because you can get to the 8 ball quite easily off this 15. Bottom left on the cue ball there. It's hard to commentate on Drago, he's so quick. 8 ball's down in a jiffy, goes up 6-4. Jungo to break. And a nice break. Makes a couple of balls. One, two, three balls he's made. And what a beautiful break. He's got options here. Solids look like the easiest set of balls to go for. Or stripes, they're just as easy actually. It's just that one set of balls are a little bit easier than the other set, although they are both quite easy. Mm -hmm. 
I, when I say that it's easy, I mean I'm talking from a professional perspective. Obviously, a bit be a bit more difficult for the lesser players or amateurs, should I say? Okay, so solids it is. Still got to mind your work when you're playing 8-ball, although you might have a nice easy lay of the land. You still have to control old YT that's so easily to snooker yourself. And when you lose position in 8-ball, it's a uphill struggle really to redeem position. Used a bit of bottom right on the cue ball there. Nice position on the five. He could go five, six, four, seven, three, eight, or five, four, six. Three, seven, eight. He's got options. He's got many ways to go about this. sure if he wanted to bump that four ball. Nevertheless, not a problem. Can use the four ball as his last ball now before potting the eight because it will give him easier position. Yeah, just done this across the three ball. Somewhere about there would be absolutely perfect. See if he uses the long rail or draws straight across. Yeah, he lose use the long rail. Now straight draw. Position for the eight. Six o'clock on the cue ball. Fairly elementary eight ball to reduce the deficit to six five. Game on again. Number 12, the fastest player in the world to break. Four ball goes in the side, five ball goes in the corner, and a nice break. No problems in this rack. Pretty sure he's going to shoot solids. only thing I see is the eight ball doesn't have an obvious pocket. If he used the seven ball as his last ball, he could bump into the ten and get position for the eight in the side pocket. We shall see how he goes about this. Follow this through, play the six in the side afterwards, maintain a little angle going down table towards the seven. Get a half ball shot on the seven, bump the ten, eight in the side. Mm, the seven does go from the opposite side of the table. You can draw near the fifteen, like that. That was pretty smart actually probably better than my way 
doesn't have to bump any balls and can play the eight in the corner now. Or the side. Ooh, doesn't want it. <laughs> Nearly hooked himself there. Or has he? Yeah, that's why we say we shouldn't bump balls. Could have played it into the corner. He overhit that. There was no real need to get cute position for the eight in the side when it, the corner was readily available. Well, that's a glaring error by Tony. Oh, this looks good. Did he make it? It's close. Oh, good effort. And uh, obviously you could see a piece of the eight. Not enough to make it, obviously. And Tony will be kicking himself there. Had a wonderful chance to put himself on the hill. Yeah, Dimitri just uh, weighing up his options. Does have a cluster there. Red and green stripe on that long rail. So he'll be working out how to attack that cluster. Wants to attack it fairly soon. Doesn't want to leave it till the end. And that's another good point. When we do have a, a problem on the table, we would like to attack it earlier, sooner rather than later. to miss and is it a scratch no it's not a scratch but didn't expect him to miss that it's kind of got away with it I don't think this eight ball is cuttable but it's a fairly easy kick one rail down table yep he's going for it expect Tony to be close if not make it oh this looks bad no yeah, miscalculated that completely, did Tony. Not sure if he had a natural angle there. Might have had to manufacture an angle. <coughs> so, it's probably going to develop the cluster now. Play the nine. With some top right English. And go into the cluster. He can draw it as well. I kind of think that the, the top spin would have been uh, my choice of play. Just because it's a little bit easier con to control. Didn't develop the 11. Now that's lying a little bit awkward. Might have the option to play a stripe in off the 11 if that's sitting nicely it doesn't look far away it's close or does he take it now yeah that's a good positional shot I definitely would take it now Roll forward, maybe, and play the 15 in the side. Okay, I don't think he played for the 15 in the side. It's not a problem.
like I said before, there's lots of different ways to go about an eight ball run out. The top players seem to find the most efficient way, and that's what makes them top players. Now he can just draw this stripe back and play the 15 in the side. Might have a little bit of angle, so could use the long rail with bottom left. Yep, looks like he's applying the English. Okay, he didn't. Straight draw. Same thing. This match is heating up, guys. Six six, both still in the mix. Rack number thirteen, Jungo to break. It is a race to eight. Six ball goes in the corner. He's made one ball and a little bit of a messy table. Does have some problems. So, a little bit of working out to do here. Doesn't have to go for the run out. You can play a safety and kind of entice your opponent to run out. And it's a difficult situation like this. Ooh, looks like the, the table's moving. Am I seeing things, or is the table moving? Maybe it's the camera, obviously. <coughs> yeah, it does look like to me that the table's moving. Um, maybe Tony farted or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, obviously it's the the camera. So electing to take this combination first. So he will be on stripes now because he made a stripe. And now play this stripe past the five ball. Wants to be straight on the nine so he can play a stop shot 
and then another stop shot, and then another stop shot. It's making me dizzy, this table moving. The dancing nine ball table. Stop shot on the nine. And this is about the easiest finish you can get. Straight in eight ball. This will put Dimitri Jungo on the hill. Rack number 14, Drago to break. Let's see if we can level up this match and take us into a hill hill decider. He's made a ball. Pretty good spread of the balls. Doesn't have an obvious shot to open his account. Maybe the five goes past the four into the corner. Or maybe that green stripe goes as well. Or maybe the plant, the combination, yeah, that's also on offer. Nicely done. So he will be on stripes now. And he'll take a long stripe. That was center ball striking. Now he can take the two and play the brown stripe next to it. I believe is the 15 into the same pocket, can get rid of that. And he'll probably use that 11 bolt for last, and then play the 8 in the side. Needs to be a little bit careful here, getting position on his penultimate stripe. Didn't want to bump it, but that's a, quite a favourable kiss. Has to be careful again. Needs to find a window for the 11. Plays a nice shot. That's an excellent positional shot from Drago. Now can just stop his ball, centre ball striking. Easy eight ball in the side. And guys, we do have a hill hill match. Seven seven, we are in the deciding rack. This is rack number 15, Dimitri Jungo to crack him. Ball in the side. Nice spread of the balls. And he'll take that. Could take either set of balls. But stripes look more favourable as he has a an easy starter for the stripes into the corner by the six. Probably wants to attack the nine ball after this. Okay, maybe not now, maybe the 15. I'm not sure if the nine goes past the six. Can play the 15 and draw back for the nine in the side. Okay, maybe he's playing on the 10 now. Yeah, 
Nice controlled shot. Found the window for the 10. So it looks like he's leaving the nine ball till last. Okay, playing on the 11 now, I think, which just goes past the 5. This isn't easy, it's a little bit tricky. Okay, maybe he's playing the 9 in the side now. Yeah, that's a very nice shot because he can use the last ball to get on the 8, and that was good thinking. So, a little bit of draw on this shot, just a few inches to get straighter on his last stripe. Yeah, can probably use a piece of the two to maintain position for the eight unless he can draw straight past it. Okay, draw straight past it, and this looks like game set and match to Dimitri Jungo. Advances to the next round. Unlucky to Tony, put up a good show, and we saw Tony firing on all cylinders in a few of those racks. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned to the Billiard Network for more American pool action from across the globe. My name is Imran Majid, signing out for now. Uh, ciao for now, guys. Bye.